Hello everyone, welcome to Rosen Carter Do The J.O.B. Uh, we're recording on Monday, you will probably be online by Tuesday because my internet's pretty cack. Um, today, as a mark of respect, I've chosen Mark Rocco, um, who died just a couple of weeks ago. Um, was he someone that you saw much of other than the Black Tiger stuff? Sorry, say that again. Have you seen? Did you see? Have you seen much Rocco before this? Like, and then the Black Tiger stuff. Um, I yeah, I've seen a bit of Rocco. I haven't really seen a lot of the Black Tiger stuff, to be fair. Um, I've seen a bit more of Rocco. Um, I, right. you know, I, I'm I'm not like overly familiar with him, but I'm pretty, you know, a little familiar with a lot of the stuff he'd done, like you know, in like England and that. I, I was mostly familiar with the stuff he did sort of towards the end of the 80s because that's when I started watching wrestling, really, like 87 when I started watching wrestling. So, uh, like, the last kind of two years of TV um, and the odd bit that I've picked up since. But I think he was fucking revolutionary, really, like way before his time, wasn't he? Like, there, there was yeah. very few. It was like him and Dynamite doing that style. That's pretty much it, Bria, really, wasn't it? Yeah, they were, they were the two that stood out. But yeah, definitely yeah. for that style. And then Dynamite went to Canada, so I suppose it kind of just left him. Yeah, yeah, and then and then like when when Dynamite went to Canada, Dynamite fucking started that whole show over there, didn't it? It's like people over there were like fucking hell, like you know what I mean, like. And it was because it, like Dynamite fucking trained guys like fucking Brett. Really, he helped Brett over there people be, that weren't accustomed to the English style and like Rocco was doing it over here. So it was like, you know, we obviously people around here were used to it because of what Rocco was doing. But over there, they were like fucking out. It's like great stuff. This. It, it's, it's like English style, but on speed, isn't it? It's like yeah. fucking, you know, in fast forward and, and yeah, yeah. very few taking the fucking bumps that they were, you know, and, and you know, the diving head butts and shit like that were, just just revolutionary that no one would see or maybe in japan they'd seen it or mexico or whatever but certainly not here yeah um so it was born mark hussey uh 69 years old when he died 11th of may 51 to the 30th of july of this year um apparently the fourth generation of you know a fighter kind of thing um he was the father of uh his son Jono is a is a boxer, and his dad Jim Hussey was a wrestler. Yeah, um, it doesn't take him further back than that, but you know, there's there's two other generations there somewhere. Oh, According okay. to Wikipedia, it was trained by Colin Joinson, who, who was kind of like the first kind of British bulldog, really. And um, that was like his his almost like his gimmick, but it was great, like proper fucking, you know, proper short stocky wrestler, Colin Joinson. Uh, 69 to 91, he was active. So he started when he was 18 uh, to 91. From Manchester, um, he did amateur wrestling at 16, which he must have done pretty well at because he went to uh, France and Pakistan and various different other countries doing that. Um, he was a pro by mid-1970 and a regular in the North in general, which I suppose... There were so many shows back then that you, you didn't have to travel too far, did you? You know, back uh, back in the day, like June '77, he beat Burt Royal for the um, British heavy middleweight title. Lost it in September of '78 to Marty Jones. Uh, mm. Jones vacated the title when Rocco regained it from Chris Adams in December of '78. Uh, he toured America, where he teamed with Greg Garnier in a tag match with the young Terry Belair. How about that? Oh, there we he go. Wrestled, uh, he wrestled Hogan. Seems strange, doesn't it, that he, he tagged with uh, Greg Garnier. Mad. Odd. It's a, um, it's odd, odd pair, that, isn't it? The stuff with Dynamite would have happened about then as well, you know. Uh, 81, he feuded with Sammy Lee that became Tiger Mask over here. Uh, that got him the booking in New Japan where he was Black Tiger, where he was wrestling for the WWF Junior title. Uh, back home at All Star, he was wrestling uh, Fuji Yamada, who became Juice and Liger. Yeah. Uh, tag down feud with Kendo Nagasaki, a regular throughout Europe. Um, the finish 
of his wrestling career came in 91 when he collapsed in a match in Worthing after wrestling Fit Finlay. Uh, the night before, he was having kidney pains after wrestling Dave Taylor. He was taken to hospital and they found out that his heart was only working at 30%. Imagine wrestling at that fucking pace. Fucking with hell. only 30 heart. Mad. Mm. That's fucking um, crazy. He retired in uh, and, and lived in Tenerife, um, but came back home where he passed away in a uh, sort of a care home kind of place. All right, so we watched three of his matches. Mm-hmm. What did you see first, mate? Sorry? Uh, hang on. Uh, right, I've done mine in... Well, I didn't, I didn't select them. And then watch them in order. I literally selected one, then watched it, selected another, oh. then watched it. You know what I mean? So what what years what years was he in was he as Black Tiger, do you know? Uh roughly. Eighty one would have been the first. Yeah. Cause I'm I'm assuming here my third match was actually the first one, and then, yeah. So basically, the last one I watched would have been the earliest, and then, okay. and then, the next two in order would be one and two. So basically, one and two are really kind of in the right order, but three would be before them, if you know what I mean. So um, right. I'll start. I'll start on my first match anyway, which was um, from 1985 at the Victoria Hall. Yeah. Um, against Kung Fu. Ah, so that would have been on uh, satellite wrestling. Yeah, it was. It was kind of what? What year did it come off TV? Like, did wrestling in? Well, th- this show from the Victoria Hall that you watch would have been satellite wrestling, which was Brian Dixon's TV show on Screen Sport. Right. Okay. Uh, that- between about 84 and 86. It was like a monthly kind of package show. Right, okay. We still ran the, the, you know, the, the British wrestling for, but they had the odd NWA match. And it was, it was, th- that was another thing that was way before its time, satellite wrestling, that, um, yeah, far more Americanized than anything that we'd seen on British TV. You know, they had two commentators and they had promos and stuff at a little, you know, desk, at, you know, the, the screen behind and all that. Um, yeah, um, it, it, I was. It was. I think if that would have been on ITV, then the show would still be on now. That's my take on it. Right. Well, yeah, I've put here. It's like real American feel to it. Proper American fucking. Because like the start of the match, it's like an explosive start. Fucking boom straight at it. Fucking rollerball powders out the ring. Then it spilled to the outside. They did a lot of outside shit. A lot of shit you don't see in the old, you know, the old English like matches and that. Um, fucking Mark exposes the turnbuckle and stuff during the match. Things like that you wouldn't really see in, you know, yeah. in like British wrestling. Um, it was pretty brutal. Fucking he chokes him with like a cable as well, or, like a fucking microphone cable or something. All this shit you would see in fucking like, you know, in like the NWA and stuff like that. Um, it sounds very similar. My first one is from that same TV show, but right. not that same show, but that same TV show, and yeah. all the same stuff going on. And and yeah, um, I think the commentators as well, Maxton G. Beasley and Vince Miller are the commentators, and that they make it. Yeah. I've written down some of the lines. It's fucking hilarious. Some of them are. Yeah, and um, it seems like at some point it just seems like there's no fucking rules either, with a lot, <laughs> a lot of shit that they're doing. It just seems like the ref just don't give a fuck. He's like, yeah, go on, just you carry on kind of thing. Um, but but he ends up, uh, fucking rollerball ends up winning. It's basically a suplex, just a normal fucking suplex. Um, I said there was some good stuff in it. Uh, it was just like, it was an okay match. It was about nine minutes, I think, nine or ten minutes or something. I think it was a semi-final as well. And the winner was facing Chick Cullen in the final of something. That's right. what I think. I don't know if the final was that night or whatever, but yeah, it was a semi-final of something. But um, there was as well, like what made it feel like American as well was after the match, there was a fucking promo with Mark and then 
fucking kung fu got involved and then they started fucking brawling backstage and shit like real fucking american style type thingy but um no it was all right though it was decent so. Wicked. uh yeah mine was still that screen sport show satellite wrestling this one was from crew though um and it was a tag rocco and rocky moran versus johnny saint and mal sanders um uh-huh. Must have been about 85 time because they were advertising a show in January of 86 at Victoria Hall. Um, again, Rocco jumps Johnny Saint at the start out of the ring. They're all over the building. Um, when they come back, John's cut and, and blood's pissing everywhere. Um, cracking monkey climb from Johnny Saint on Rocco. Uh, Mal's in all baby face now gets tagged in. Uh, Rocky Moran cuts him off. Rocky Moran's fabulous. One of um, one of the, you know, the the sort of Finn Lee clan um, from Ireland. Free Frank Casey. Um, they're doing all the tag stuff, you know, using the tag rope and blind tags and fucking dirty tags and no tags at all. Um, oh, okay. There's some, some fucking fabulous lines. The commentators are brilliant, right? One of them is Rocco is the architect of anxiety, and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> he thinks rules are drawing lines which I thought was <laughs> fucking hilarious um, Mal fires up and starts bumping around um, uh, Rocco now this is a 3-4-1 uh, the first fall is a Boston crab on Mal Sanders by Rocky Moran and then Rocco puts his foot through to give a little bit of assist uh, the next part comes there's just heat on Mal all the way through. In comes Saint. Uh, oh, Johnny uh, Johnny Saint tries his little combination thing where he, where, you know, taps the leg and round it over he goes and swings round and through the legs and all that shit. Um, but Rocky Moran cuts him off. The next fall to make it one apiece is a crossbody from Mal to Rocky. And then the finish is, uh, is a bit of a three-parter. It's the pole driver... Uh, the top rope elbow and the suplex from Rocco. So the suplex must have been quite a regular Rocco thing. Um, but it came after the sort of tombstone kind of thing and the elbow off the top. But I really enjoyed it. Proper had me grip. There was a promo at the end of this as well. Um, that Mal Sanders came in and started fucking arguing. Um, and for that, Finley got uh, Finley fucking Rocco got banned for 60 days. He was probably going on a tour or somewhere when he so so they got to write him out in some fashion uh yeah banned for 60 days and that was uh that was him done but yeah i i, I really enjoyed this because it had four people that i really like watching and mm. it was all action it, it, it was a little bit of everything it was like wrestling action brutality um the commentators gave it that comedy feel as well as putting the match over as something legit so yeah enjoyed it right um cool my next one is uh from reslo oh yeah welsh yeah well yeah because that's the welsh thing but i always thought i I was a bit confused because i always thought that it was like not english commentary on them shows oh yeah they they put some onto uh video like uh wrestling madness and the best of wrestling were like wrestle matches sort of Orig Williams like British Wrestling Federation or whatever he called himself and Lee Bamba would have done the commentary over the top of them or right. Orig Orig and Bryn Fon did the commentary over some of the German matches right okay right yeah because that was, that was the only confusing thing, because I'd never seen it with like English commentary before, so I was a bit like thrown thrown off by it. But no, it was uh, it was against Danny Boy Collins, and it that's was... On the, uh, I think that's on Best of Rest in the video. Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, I'm guessing it was like late 80s, because that mm. maybe... I think during the commentary, they're on about like entering into the 90s, so maybe 89 or something. Yeah, must have been. Um, again, this was quite similar to the first match in the sense it was a lot of American-style shit 
and fucking <laughs> it made me laugh right near the fucking start. Fucking <laughs> Mark's like out the ring. He comes in with like fuck those what he's got in his hand. It's a massive fucking <laughs> a massive plank like a fucking advertising board. Oh, yeah, while they've got around the ring with the Welsh flags on. You are the, what they've got around the ring in it, the barriers with the Welsh flags on. Oh, it might be. It was just like a massive plank, like a white plank of something. And he fucking he donks Danny right on the fucking Swede. Fucking right, <laughs> right between the eyes, like no DQ though. It's like fuck it, you just crack on, you know, doing what they're doing kind of thing. So um it kind of made me laugh. There's fucking Drop kick from the top rope from Danny at one point. There's a fucking suplex from the top rope from Mark. Like, fucking proper, like, American, like, high spots yeah. and shit. And the to the wall. You are? Proper balls to the wall wrestling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And there's a, there's a point where the commentator makes me laugh. Can you remember the fucking... You know the... The back elbow drop that DiBiase used to do, and he'd never fucking hit it. He'd always miss, like second rope and take that fucking bump backwards kind of thing well mark fucking he does the same thing in this match but like it's clear that he fucking missed the elbow drop because fucking danny boy collins like obviously moves away so he goes for the elbow he fucking misses it the commentator is like oh he lost his balance there and I'm yeah. fucking, <laughs> I'm like, he didn't lose his fucking balance. He went for an elbow drop. What the fuck a move? Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> made him made him look a right cunt. Like, you know, like why like say that he fucking, like he slipped or he like fell over when he clearly didn't. <laughs> like, uh, that kind of made me laugh a bit. But um, like I also put Danny was so fucking. He was so good as well. He was like so smooth that like you know some of the I've seen him wrestle. <laughs> Perfect opponent for Rocco as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He was uh, really good. He had like some really good like flashy sequences and shit in this match. Um, there was uh, the ending of the match, uh, crossbody from Danny Boy, and they've done the old flare spot where he gets the crossbody, but they both go over the top rope to the outside. And, and that was the finish as they both got counted out. They're both trying to pull each other back out the ring as the count's going on. And then they right. ended up getting counted out. But it was decent, though. Like I say, very Americanized as well type style. But yeah, it was enjoyable. About 10 minutes as well, that one. Sweet. Um, my next is all-star show from TV, ITV, uh, from Bedworth. 20th of August, 88, it was uh, um, shown. Um, and it's Marty Jones versus Mark Rocco. There's loads of like classic Marty Jones stuff on YouTube, Marty Jones and Rocco, but this one um, I picked because it was it was on the Masters of Mayhem video or something that my brother bought me years ago when I was a kid, so it's kind of stuck in my head ever since. Like um, yeah. World Mid Heavyweight Championship, Rocco's the champion. Um, Lee Bamber is the MC. He was doing the commentary on on the one you just watched. Kent Walton on the commentary. Frank Casey again is the referee. Um, you can tell this is going to be fucking rough right from the start. You know, Rocco's in there with his fucking, you know, his headband and his big black yeah. glove that he's wearing yeah. and all this shit. And fucking, you know, Marty's fucking standing tall and, you know, say what you want about Marty, but he, 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 he fucking had it nailed here. Um, the, 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 the thing that was brutal to watch here is this is August. There's a, and this is so fucking good, but there's only four months left of TV. You know, like in, in four months' time, there'll be no more of this to watch, which I think is fucking tragic. You know what I mean? Taking British wrestling off TV, fucking wrong. Um, again, free four match. So the first um, was like a, a nice little, you know, when you go, go behind into the ropes and roll up into the sort of victory roll gimmick. Uh, yeah. First one's to Jones. Second one to make it one apiece was Jones tries the crossbody, <clears throat> um, but he goes into a, into the um, tombstone that Rocco likes to use quite a bit. Uh, that makes it one apiece. And the, the the last sort of period 
was pretty fucking all action brutal. The blood was flying. There was fucking, you know, feet are flying. Um, I'll have a baseball slide from Marty. Uh, Rocco's bleeding. Fucking Jones is bleeding. At the end of the round, Rocco won't release this sort of chin lock kind of hold. Um, Jones sends the referee flying. Referee gets up, points at Jones, fucking rings the bell. Jones gets disqualified. So now oh. Rocco's fucking on him. Rocco's on him. Um, MC's in the ring announcing Jones has won. Rocco's all like, yay. And then he says, Rocco, you're also disqualified. Fucking place blows, to be fair. So it was uh, very enjoyable. My favourite of the um, of the three matches that I watched. Okay. Oh. Purely based on action alone. Marty oh. Jones. Number one. One. Hello, Marty Jones. Wait you right. now. The third match, which I actually thought when I picked it, it would have probably been the best match of the three, but it turned out to probably be my least favourite of the three. Um, it was this Black Tiger, and it was against Tiger Mask. Right. From Japan, obviously. Um, I don't know, like, there was some really good stuff in it, but it felt like watching it, the match never, it never really got going at the pace that I thought it would, you know what I mean? With the two that are in the match, you thought like when you watch Dynamite and Tiger Mask, you know that they might do some shit on the floor and then it's going to build to some fucking crazy shit and then slow it back down and stuff like that. It never, it never seemed to have that same like feeling. Like there was a lot of map based stuff and there was, you know, a couple of little quick spots here and there. But generally to me, it felt like there was a good spot in it that I did like though. Um, well, I said I did like, I mean, you could have fucking got DQ'd for it if the referee said it, but there's like a waist lock switch. And as Tiger Mask has got the waist lock on Black Tiger, he just fucking throws his leg back and gives him a low blow. I mean, right. you could argue you could argue the fucking ref didn't see it because obviously fucking eye contact and that. And it's like, you know, so we could have missed it. But not long after that, there's a point where uh, he fucking Tiger Mask picks him up as if he's going to give him a back suplex but drops him on the top rope and fucking cradles him on the bollocks. So it's kind of like payback for the fucking low blow then. Whether they fucking planned it out to be like that, it just kind of made sense how he's got him back for fucking kicking him in the knackers, basically. That was a pretty cool uh, cool little spot. I ended up with a double count out. Um, but yeah, I put, it looked, I put it looked really good. Like, you know, it looked like realism and everything. It just didn't seem to pick up the pace the way I... Thought it was gonna pick up the pace, but no, it was uh, it was all right though. Yeah, the only Black Tiger match I've ever seen is the one with the Cobra at the uh, Madison Square Garden. Oh yeah, and um, that was fucking fabulous. I only watched that like maybe you know two or three weeks ago, um, and yeah, fucking that was revolutionary. But that's the only Black Tiger match I've ever seen. All right. Um, my last one's Wrestler again, Oreg Williams shows, uh, from the S4C Welsh TV show. Um, from, I'm going to have to guess this is 89, 90-ish, okay. uh, versus Tony Sinclair. There's loads of Tony Sinclair matches, and you know, Rocco versus Sinclair from Wrestler on YouTube. But this one is the one that I picked that was most recent, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. like there's, there's one from 86 and one from 84 and you know blah 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 but this is this is the most recent one uh, the referee is Jack Flash Davey who is Peter Nolte who's, who, who's written a fabulous book but isn't going to release it which I'm fucking devastated about but he, he was kind enough to send me uh, like email me a copy of it and it's hell of a yeah. read you know you know, yeah. uh, you know a wrestler island and wrestler for Orig and primarily a referee and it's a really interesting fucking heartfelt, you know, you can tell how much he loves wrestling and the people in it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a real shame that he's not releasing it. Pretty fucking So why, why, why is he not releasing it then, did he say? Or? No. I really don't know. But, um, you know, I've been lucky enough to get a chance to read it. And it's, it's really fucking really good. And, and uh, 
you know, I, got, I can't thank him enough for, for him doing that because that's pretty cool. Um, Welsh commentary, Bryn Fon's doing commentary. Now, Bryn Fon, right, I, knew, I know nothing about him other than um, S4C, the TV channel. When I had Sky, he was on there. And right. I was flicking through channels. This is like a year or two ago. And um, he was there singing. It said at the end, uh, you know, uh, flashing up at the bottom, Bryn Fon, and he was there singing. So he must be like some sort of Welsh uh, fucking celebrity kind of chat show host or some shit. I don't know, but um, oh, and when I, you know, I used to tape wrestler shows because it was you know because it was on the the satellite system. It ran till you know mid nineties, late nineties even. They were repeating them. Um, but when I, when I lived at Butlins, we had S4C. We could pick up from Minehead. So, yeah, it was like half hour a week on a Saturday. Fabulous show. Um, anyhow, Rocco versus Tony Sinclair. Rocco, it's the corner post. Outside the ring with his fist. That's how it starts. Um, great punch from Tony. Fucking spank. Uh, there's a load of sort of tackle, sleepy, leapy arm drag spots, which you spot on every one of them. Um, wrestler had a cracking look at this time as well. It looked really good. Like, you know, the, the lights on the backdrop and the ring was fucking immaculate. Um, plenty of arm drags, I've already said that. Uh, Rocco misses the knee drop. Uh, but then catches the little cannonball thing that he did so well. In Siguri from Tony. Uh, backslide by Tony. Scorpion Deathlock. Cannonball that he missed. Uh, shed load of, like, just, just brilliant stuff. Tony Sinclair looked amazing at this point as well. Like, this is, is a little later on in Tony's career, as much as it was Rocco's, and it's the best he'd ever looked. And, and Tony Sinclair is possibly the nicest man I've ever met in my life. So nice. Lovely man. Him and his brother, Roy, are just fabulous humans. Uh, it's a time limit draw in the end. Um, even after the bow, like the slaps and the chops are still going and the fucking referee gets between them. Um, but, yeah, really good. Uh, but then... You've got two of the best in the country, if not the world, in the ring at this time. I mean, Tony Sinclair was well respected across Europe, and you know he'd yeah. been to Japan and stuff as well. So, um, love to him too because his wife died the same day that we found out about Rocker, which is oh yeah, I've, seen that. I've, got, I've got Tony on Facebook, so yeah, yeah. I read all of that. So that's pretty, uh, pretty tragic blessing. Mm. But all in all, Rocco. He, for the time period, you weren't going to see that anywhere else, were you? Mm-hmm. You know, no, no one else here was going to be doing that shit. Um, and I think the country was fucking lucky to have him as as a as a as a reputa- re- representation of, of Great Britain to go to fucking America or where you know to MSG and um, wherever else he went, he was fucking fabulous. You can't fault him. Um, oh, definitely. Reckless, reckless, yes. Um, but we, we've said this before. It's meant to meant to be a fight. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be fucking graceful. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of reckless unpredictability and fucking fabulous. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think sometimes, like people, well, like when some wrestlers make it look too much of a fucking like choreograph like yeah so sometimes it's good to look a bit scrappy and it's like i always said that like i don't want to like shit on anyone but i've always kind of said that about d malenko like i think that he was fucking such a good technician but i feel like it just looked too rehearsed for me like you know sometimes when i see people like i think fucking hell that's so good but then it just looks like everything is planned, you know. So I like it a bit scrappy here and there, you know. Yeah, too fluid sort of thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, that was Rocco. Huge respect to him. God rest his soul. Um, yeah, like I said, this this was my pick this week. 
I've also picked the tag for this week, which is the Batten Twins on Friday. And we're yeah. doing an episode of Pro Wrestling this week on Wednesday, but it'll probably be online the day after, so like Thursday and Saturday. But your pick for next week, what are you going for? I've gone for um, I did have a pick originally, um, but then with like obviously the sad news of Kamala passing away, like was it yesterday? Um, yeah. I thought we'll go with Kamala and pick some of his no, matches, to be honest. Yeah. Do you know what I've noticed about Kamala's death? Um, is exactly how much love people had for him because, yeah, when somebody dies, I'm on so many Facebook wrestling pages. And 80% of my Facebook friends are wrestling orientated. Yeah. So you will see, you know, the odd notification of the passing of somebody. Um, you know, Rocco, understandably, was mostly the British people um, and the odd wrestling news site. But Kamala fucking broke my internet. Do you know what I mean? Like it proper blew up from from people respecting him and yeah you know i've never seen that many fucking you know r.i.p kamala's never ever seen that many before yeah and a lot of people were like um you can tell as well because sometimes people when someone passes away you would read about like their accomplishments and how much of a icon and stuff they were but like most of kamala's posts are about how much of a great person he was you know what i mean and like obviously he was an icon he was like a fucking legend no doubt but like the people that knew him it was all about how fucking how much of a nice guy he was you know and that's how that's when you know like you know like like we said that rocco was iconic and revolutionary kamala was iconic and revolutionary but in so many different ways like yeah, so I don't know, more ways than Rocco. I mean, totally different ways to Rocco. If you know what I mean, like mm-hmm. we'd never seen a gimmick like that before, really. No. Fucking, and it was one that stuck for so long. You know, he he was Kamala from fucking I don't know what is it going to be eighty three or something maybe. We we'll look into it more then, like but until right the finish, you know that that's. What's that? Thirty odd years, isn't it? Thirty-five years of the same gimmick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and well, he I mean, was always remembers Kamala. Yeah, always on top, everywhere he went, and yeah, good on him. Yeah. So we'll do him next Monday. Yeah. Wednesday for pro wrestling this week. Friday for the Batten Twins. We'll see everyone then. <laughs>